fabulous, fabulous. Am I on? How's that? Can you hear me? Um, delighted to be here, thrilled uh, at this wonderful turnout, thrilled at the uh, march we had together, the feeling of solidarity, the feeling of love, dare I say it, uh, the feeling that we're going to win this thing was just overpowering. <laughs> groups, of 600 MAI free zones across the country and we won it. And may I remind the people who think that this agenda is just fine and nobody's going to interfere with it. The WTO is on its knees. The free trade area of the Americas is dead. Oh, the only people who don't know that this model of globalization is over and done with are the people heading our countries in the big business community telling them what to do. And it's time they listened. <laughs> in here, I'm going to give you the 10 reasons to oppose SPP, and I'm going to do it fast because we only have a few minutes each. Number one, the SPP is profoundly anti-democratic. The North American Competitiveness Council, made up of the CEOs from 30 major corporations, including Walmart, General Electric, Merck, and Lockheed Martin, co-governs the three uh, with the three heads of states and drafted all of the SPP's 300 initiatives. No other sector in our society has been consulted on the SPP and elected representatives in all three countries have been frozen out of the process. Number two, the SPP extends George Bush's war on terror with its fixation on bombs, borders, and Bibles to Canada and Mexico. Canada has now merged its no-fly list with the five million Americans on the master U.S. list regularly turning back refugee claimants from Latin America to take their chances with the Bush administration, and is silent on the abuses in Guantanamo Bay and the foreign sites of rendition and torture. Three, the SPP sets the stage for a common continental foreign policy because it assumes a common approach to external threats. That is the fundamental basis of the deal. In order to keep goods flowing across the U.S.-Canada border, Canadian and Mexican authorities must adopt a common notion of defense. Canada is clearly and openly now in Afghanistan to support the debacle in Iraq. Uh, and as continental defense operation operability increases, the chances for an independent foreign policy decrease. Number four, the SPP has adopted continental regulatory convergence. 20 cross-border working groups using the definition of smart regulations with its emphasis on risk assessment over the precautionary principle, have been tasked with harmonizing standards, regulations, and practices in areas as diverse as the environment, health, food, intelligence, transport, law enforcement, traveler security, and regional competitiveness. This with a superpower where political appointees now supervise the work of regul regulators in all federal agencies to ensure that regulations are market friendly. Number five, the SPP will help reintroduce the defeated multilateral agreement on investments back into North America through TILMA, the Trade, Investment and Labor Mobility Agreement already in place between Alberta and British Columbia. The <laughs> SPP plan for regulatory convergence is made more difficult by the fact that the provinces have a lot of authority over rules affecting the economy. TILMA gives corporations the right to sue for compensation if they run into higher standards in other provinces. If all of the provinces sign up to TILMA, which is the plan, it will make the job of continental regulatory convergence much easier. Six, the SPP is an energy grab and will accelerate the destruction of energy reserves on the continent. A five-fold increase is built into the SPP process and the U.S. energy companies and the White House want to cut any red tape or environmental concerns connected with this project. Prime Minister Harper bailed out of Kyoto Accord to pave the way for massive new energy production in Canada to provide for U.S. energy security. Mexico's independent energy policy will be the next item on the table. 
Number seven, the SPP paves the way for American control of Canada's water supplies. This was confirmed by the three think tanks hired by the governments to design a policy blueprint for the continent called North American Futures 2025 Project. Leaked documents for several closed door meetings last spring clearly stated that water exports and commercial diversions are a serious topic of negotiation. Assurances by the Harper government that Canada's water is not for sale sound very, very much like the assurances made by Brian Mulroney 20 years ago that Canada's energy was safe from NAFTA. Number eight, the STPP promotes the fast tracking of cheap imports from Asia, set to grow exponentially in the coming decade through the expansion of super ports, particularly Halifax and Vancouver, and trade corridors, including a NAFTA superhighway that will include multi-lane highways, railway lines, electrical grill, grids, energy and perhaps water pipelines, and liquid natural gas terminals, all to facilitate this explosion in imports. There are nowhere near enough inspectors in North America at present to deal with these imports now. The SPP will make the situation more dangerous. Number nine, the SPP will weaken labor standards. The North American Future 2025 project calls for labor flexibility to respond to the new demands of a trans transitional market in order to keep this new bloc competitive. This is code speak for disbanding unions, lower wages, and precarious working conditions. Fortress North America will need increased seasonal and migrant worker from, workers from Mexico and indeed Canada's migrant workers program is to be expanded and protections for these workers weakened. And finally, the SPP will encourage regional integration and free trade zones like Cascadia and Atlantica whose business backers are already touting the lower labor standards and harmonization of regulations right across all of the provinces of the Atlantic area and the North America, I'm sorry, the northeastern states of the United States involved in this project. As east-west links are broken and economic and security considerations move to the fore, the links that bind us as a people will weaken, as will the social contract that we have made to one another. Now I said there were 10, but I have one more minute left and I will say probably there's one more. And that is this model is the absolute wrong model for the world. This model is based, as, is not only profoundly anti-democratic, but is guided and led solely by trade and economic interests. We're not opposed to trade in this room, we're not opposed to the economy, but we believe they must serve people and communities. And when it gets turned upside down, our people and communities and resources have to serve the agenda of these large corporations, something is terribly wrong in our world. And we are here to say that we are not going to accept this. I expect this model of, a, of an executive agreement which bypasses the legislatures is a model that they would like to impose around the world. And don't forget, it was the Canada-US trade agreement that became the model for NAFTA, which became the model for all the bilateral agreements, which became the model for the WTO. So this may be the breeding ground again for the next level of this uh, corporate power, corporate takeover of our world. Well, we've been working at the Council and the Common Frontiers and the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives and other groups very, very hard to get the word out around Canada and across the, uh, across the, the, the continent. And I can tell you it is happening. We're getting calls and hits on our website from all over the world and suddenly this issue has come to the fore. And we are going to stand up loud and clear and say no to this agenda, not just because of Canadian environmental concerns and Canadian workers' concerns and our concerns about health and safety, although those are real and valid, nor just about the issue of democracy, but because if we allow this to happen on this continent, it's going to be the blueprint for the world, and we're not going to do that again. Thank you very much for being here.